If you've been anywhere near social media these past two weeks, you've likely seen the buzz around Snapmaker's new U1 printer. This four-headed tool changer launched on Kickstarter on August 19th and raised over $7 million in the first 16 hours. And honestly, I'm not that surprised. With an early bird price of $749 and a listed MSRP of $999, there really hasn't been anything close to this in a market that's been waiting for an affordable multi-tool printer. I've been on the sideline for years wanting to buy or build a tool changer printer for projects and experimentation. I've come close more than once, but have always found a reason to hold off. So when I heard what the U1 was offering at this price point, I set my alarm nice and early and jumped in to become backer number 39. In this video, I'll share why I finally took the leap, some concerns I still have, and things I'm hoping for with this machine. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. As I mentioned, I've been interested in tool changers for a really long time. I was at Murph back in 2018, which is when E3D first brought out their tool changer platform to show off and watching it grab and park different tool heads while printing with dissimilar materials together absolutely blew my mind. Over the years, I've followed multiple projects like Jubilee and Blackbox and always hoped that tool changers would become more widespread. I went as far as pre-ordering the Prusa XL back in November of 2021, but I ended up canceling that pre-order largely just due to the price. While I've really enjoyed filament swapping systems like the AMS or the Box Turtle and feel like they've really made multicolor 3D printing a lot more accessible, they absolutely have trade-offs. The filament swapping process takes time, they can be wasteful, you're limited to one nozzle size and have minimal options for combining different materials. I finally got to experience tool changing myself for the first time a couple of months ago when we finished building the ProForge 300 over on the ModBot Army channel. I still have a lot of testing to do, but I get the hype and uh, I'm really hoping that maybe in the next six months I'm able to build a stealth changer to just sort of increase the tool changing capabilities that I have here. The community has been asking for an affordable tool changer for years and many people believed that Bamboo Labs next generation printer which ended up being the H2D was going to be just that. For full disclosure, Snapmaker did reach out to me in early June with some details about the U1 printer their plans to launch on Kickstarter, as well as an offer to be one of the early testers of that machine. Instead of jumping at the opportunity to play around with this new printer, I expressed a handful of concerns. This included that the unit was going to be launched on Kickstarter and that the machine I was going to be receiving while a late one was still a prototype. I run a really tight schedule between work, creating YouTube videos and live streaming and expecting uh, the birth of our second child, I didn't feel like I had the capabilities to provide the feedback I would want if I was the company. On top of that, I've had a handful of experiences with prototype units over the last 10 years. And in many cases, what I receive in front of me ends up being vastly different than what the customer ends up receiving. So I don't necessarily see the value in testing a unit that's not the final machine. I mentioned that if the machine was near final, I'd be willing to take a look at it and do some testing. But if that was not the case, I would rather hold out and get a unit when the retail printers were available. The reply I got was, thank you for being upfront and I will basically talk with my team and circle back with you. Well, that was two months ago now and I have not heard anything since. On the topic of Kickstarter, this is a subject I've largely avoided over the years because it is a topic that some people feel really strongly about. Launched in 2009, the goal of the platform was to be a place where individuals and startups could pitch their product and through crowdfunding, raise enough capital to bring that idea to life. The incentives for buyers usually came in the form of a discount over what the retail price of that item would be or things like add-ons and bonuses. While those incentives still hold true, the thing that's changed vastly, at least in the 3D printing space, is that more often than not, the people that are using these Kickstarter campaigns are large established companies that should have enough 
capital to be able to bring a new product to market. In these situations, it seems like the primary goal of using Kickstarter is to just sort of build hype around that product launch, and it's really just more of a marketing tool. For a really long time, this was frowned upon by the community at large, and it's something that I've never really been a big fan of. However, over time, there have been more and more of these, and while there is definitely a fair amount of people that have been burned by Kickstarters, the overwhelming majority of people has no issue throwing their money at one of these campaigns. With how successful they've proven themselves to be time and time again, I can absolutely see why a business would decide to go this route. I still don't love it and would really prefer the platform to be used by people that do need help getting raising capital to bring their idea to life, but honestly, I feel like that ship has sailed a long time ago. Really, the biggest concerns I have now is making sure that people understand the terms of backing a Kickstarter. I won't go through all of this, but I will highlight a few things and then leave it linked in the description for anyone that wants to go over there and read through the rest of the fine print. Backing a product on Kickstarter is nothing like buying a product from a storefront. Their terms state that backers are not buying a product, but backing something that does not exist. There can be changes, delays, and if the product you backed is not completed, well, there are no guarantees. The backer is not entitled to a reward simply because the campaign was funded. So with any campaign, you are putting your trust not only in the product, but majorly in the company behind the product to make good on what they've promised. But if they don't, you're out whatever you spent with absolutely nothing to show for it. As long as you're aware of that going in, then really it just comes down to what is your risk tolerance. Knowing this and the potential risk, I decided to back the Snapmaker U1. While I really enjoy both building and modding printers, I would really love to have a tool changer that I don't do a whole lot of tinkering with that I can just use to throw various materials at and just use as sort of an experimentation platform. At the price point they are offering, and with it checking so many of my boxes, I was willing to back it but not without some debate first. There's a number of things that I'm optimistic about with the U1. For starters, Snapmaker is no stranger to 3D printing or Kickstarters, and they've had two other successful Kickstarters that they have been able to deliver on. With how long the company has been around and really a company's reputation being everything, they have a lot to lose by not following through on what they've promised. Since the videos for the U1 launched right when the Kickstarter launched, I didn't get a chance to watch them prior to backing, but I've watched a handful of them since. With an exception or two, the hardware seems largely solid, and the primary thing that seems to need some work is on the firmware side, both with the machine and its screen interfacing, as well as Clipper that's running on the back of the printer. Not to discredit those things because they can absolutely make or break a printer, but those are at least things that can be worked on while they are busy cranking out all the hardware components and working on assembly to fine tune the user experience. My most recent experience with Snapmaker was with their IDEX J1 that I did a full review on about two years ago. That printer was hands down the best off the shelf IDEX experience I have ever witnessed. And while it's not exactly a tool changer, it did give me confidence in the engineers working over there and what their capabilities are. With the things I am optimistic about, I also have a few concerns. Based off what they're offering, I don't doubt that Snapmaker anticipated that the U1 would be a successful campaign, but I do wonder on just how successful they thought it was going to be and if they anticipated this level of backers. Release delays are something I have seen many times over the years, and I am just really hoping that they are able to produce enough units to meet the time frames that they are claiming on their Kickstarter page without having to take shortcuts and sacrifice things like proper QC. From what I've seen and their FAQ, the printer uses an all-in-one heatsink, heat break, and nozzle combo. So it won't be just producing those machines, but making sure that there are enough replacements, spare parts, and accessories for all of those machines to go around. The other sort of general concern I have, which isn't necessarily geared just to the Kickstarter, is how sustainable the price point actually is. I understand that the $749 pricing is just a Kickstarter thing, but even the retail price of $1,000 is 
quite a bit less than what I would expect a unit like this to cost. Perhaps even with slim margins, the sheer number of units being sold is going to make it worthwhile, but only time will tell. Ultimately, only you can decide whether the U1 is worth backing and if you should. I'm cautiously optimistic and am really hoping that the U1 is just the start of us seeing more budget-friendly tool changers hitting the market. I would love for the success of this machine to light a fire underneath a handful of other manufacturers that have been sort of churning out really similar printers so that way we do see more tool changers and hopefully more developments in this space. Whether you are or aren't interested or like or dislike Kickstarters, competition is great for consumers and it's a big reason why I want them to be successful. And that's my thoughts on the Snapmaker U1 based on everything leading up to this point. I don't usually make videos on printers that I don't have, but because I decided to back it and sort of some of the context around all this, I felt like I needed to make a video covering it all. If all goes well, there will be a follow-up video in the future where I will do a review of my backed U1 printer once I've had ample time to do proper testing. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that it at least gave you a few things to consider. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video just about every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you want to support the channel further, I'll have links in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.